now sports with Chase Shannon. More than 25 area teams will kick off their playoff journeys this week as over the next month or so state champions will be crowned on both sides of the Red River. The Ardmore Tigers are one of those clubs hopeful to bring home some hardware. They have a great shot at doing that. Coach Doug Wendell's bunch just locked up the program's first district championship in nine years. They even spent some time on top of the Class 5A rankings. The season is long from over, though, and there is a lot of parity across the state. So much, in fact, Wendell thinks about half of the Class 5A field has a chance to nab a gold ball this December. Lot MacArthur's good enough to win state. Deer Creek's good enough to win state. Um, uh, I'd like to think that we are. I, I feel like McAllister is. And uh, then you've got some other teams in there that haven't haven't been used to going to the playoffs, maybe not really understanding the, the gravity of playing four games. Uh, but but there's I think there's at least six in the tournament that have a, ch a legitimate chance of winning it. It'll be a rematch of last year's first round matchup for the Tigers as they're going to host Bishop McGinnis with a 7:30 kickoff. A couple Texas teams will open up by district play tomorrow night. Both Gunner and Bells playing for survival at neutral sites. Gunner taking on Edgewood and Princeton, while Bells will be out in Bonham taking on Clarksville. They will have a 7:30 kick. The early signing period is underway when prep athletes in basically every sport but football can sign national letters of intent between now and next Wednesday. Several Texoma standouts would take advantage. That includes White Wright's Mason Riggins, all six feet nine inches of him. The basketball big man will take his talents to Long Beach to play for the 49ers. He says he loves their coaching staff and the fact they'll get to play tough competition like Arizona and Oklahoma State next year. The three-star recruit had offers from several other universities, including Tulsa and Boise State, but he's glad the process is over. I mean, it gets a lot with the phone calls, and um, it gets you don't want to answer most of them anymore. <laughs> so it's tough, but it's, it's fun. It's a fun process. Check out the fella flush home. This two-handed jam we will be seeing a lot of that this winter. White Wright will tip off their season in just six days. How's Peyton Tenney is going D1. That's big time for the softball player as she will head southeast to Stephen F. Austin, becoming a lady lumberjack. The third baseman and left fielder had several other offers, but family ties to Nacogdoches had her thinking purple. My brother goes there, so I'll have someone to, you know, talk to and won't be lonely. And and love the coaches. I loved everything about it. It was awesome. Looking forward to Whitesboro and Howe District softball games because we'll get to see Tenny go head to head with Bearcat middle infielder Alexis Van Landingham. She would ink with Oklahoma Christian this morning and she's actually a legacy there. Her granddad, aunt and uncle would all attend OCU. The future Lady Eagles talents were enough to get her a sweet deal as well. I wasn't really planning on going there. I'd, I'd been looking at there and at Harding University, um, but Oklahoma Christian offered me a 90% scholarship. Um, and that's about as good as you can do for an, a middle infielder. Um, so obviously that was a big factor in it. Her senior classmate Aaron Dobbs will also cross the Red River as he will hit the links in Alva next fall. Dobbs is signed with Northwestern Oklahoma State to play golf for the Rangers. It's a dream come true for the Bearcat and he says he's overjoyed. Words can't describe how excited I am. It's a really big day for me. So big day for those kids, and there's a lot more coming up in the next week as the early signing period wraps up next Wednesday. So we'll keep uh, documenting these signings for you. Pretty exciting. Thanks, Seth.